Hello and welcome to another edition of James and Chris Science Videos where today we're looking at static electricity and we're looking at it um, in regards to Key Stage 3 and the ICB syllabus. So um, we're going to start off with, with the question of, of what is electricity and it's, it's a subject that I covered in another video but I'm, I'm going to kind of go through the basics in terms of where it fits in with static electricity. So in order to do this we're, we're going to focus on one little particle and electricity is all about the electrons. Now, <clears throat> we, we teach at Key Stage 3 that particles are like these spherical balls um, that make up all matter. But when we dig into them a little bit deeper, they're actually made out of smaller particles called subatomic particles. And one of those particles is called an electron. Now, I've, I've put on the, pitch, on the um, screen an image of an atom. Um, it's an atom of hydrogen. And the electron... Um, you can see as the dotted blue area that goes round. The, the central bit is the nucleus. That's something called a proton. But electrons are tiny, almost weightless particles that whiz around at high speed. So that dotted line you can see around the hydrogen is where it keeps appearing. So it's not lots of electrons. That's one electron bounding around, making marks when the photo is taken that you can see. So the electron is the particle that we're going to focus on. So let's have a little bit of a look at it, a little bit more detail. Now, the electrons, they're so small and they can move around so quickly, and that's going to be very useful to us. But the other bit that is crucial is that they are negatively charged. And negatively charged particles are going to be very useful for lots of reasons. Now, the biggest thing of why they're useful is that charged particles work a little bit like magnets. If I put two of the same together, they repel and push away from each other. And if I put opposites, they attract. So the electrons can move around all over the place. The other ones, the protons in the middle, they can't. So the, electron, the protons aren't as useful as the electrons. Now, <clears throat> when we look at materials, the materials that have got lots of free electrons are the ones that are good conductors. So our metals like copper, um, and some non-metals like graphite, and, which is carbon, um, can also conduct electricity. They've got lots of electrons spare. So they've got lots of these little particles that can pass that electricity on. So what's the difference then between static and current electricity? Well, I'm going to give you two quotations, not quotations, definitions, that have come from the online dictionary. Um, and they kind of explain a little bit about the difference between static and current in terms of electricity. So the first definition I came up and found with static was it's lacking in movement, action or change. Um, I don't need to worry about the second bit particularly, but it's that lacking of movement. In other words, they're still. Now, I've, I've put, I researched, I typed in Google, I said static object, and, and it came up with a vase as the answer for what a, they think a static object is. So I, I put it on there. But any object that doesn't move, we, we consider static. So, you know, some of you go on holidays to static caravans. That's a caravan that stays in one place all the time. So that word means stationary. Whereas the word current, um, the definition from dictionary.com says a body moving in a definite direction. So it's going in one direction. And I've put a picture of a river as, you know, river currents are really easy to explain. And in electricity, it's going to be very similar. We've got electrons flowing in a specific direction because it goes back to those electrons. So um, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit about how static electricity works and how we can charge objects up. Now, this is my first attempt on paint. I'm very sorry. You can see my very badly receding hairline and a red balloon, of which I've actually got the balloon. Yeah, there it is, one balloon. So to get static to work, because electrons are so small and are so free, you can actually rub them from one object to another. So, for example, if I take the balloon and I rub it on my head like this, I will pass electrons from my hair onto the balloon. So the balloon has now got all these electrons inside, which has given the uh, balloons a negatively charged overall. So the balloon itself has become negatively charged. Now, this, this is useful because what it can then do is I can attract positive things. Now, here's a picture of me trying it earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll try it now on the camera and see if it works. So I've got to rub it again, get it going. And I put it down on a piece of paper, and there you see it's attracted the piece of paper, and the piece of paper is now stuck to it. So how did that happen? Well, the paper itself is slightly positively charged, 
So the balloon, by the fact that I've rubbed all those electrons onto the balloon, the balloon has become negatively charged. And so now I can use that to attract other positive things, but it will also repel against negative things. So um, some of you ask, well, sir, okay, it's great, but what is a static shock? So if I overload an air, and it's usually an insulator, so a balloon, for example, doesn't conduct electricity very well, it holds those electrons in place. They can't move around because they don't have those three electrons that we're talking about with the conductors. So if I load an object full of electrons, the electrons are going to want to escape because each electron is being negatively charged, is repelling against each other, and so they're going to want to move away. So if I give them a pathway, if I put something close to them, which creates a pathway down to the earth, then they will take that opportunity and they will jump from that object to the next one, and that will be that spark and that little shock that you get. So <clears throat> it's very difficult to do static without bringing up the Van de Graaff generator. So my next kind of little section, I've, I've been into the lab and I've got out the Van de Graaff generator and I've just got two very simple demonstrations that will help show you how static works and what static does. So I'm off to the lab now. I'll see you in a minute. We're on to the Van de Graaff generator, which is one of our key ways of showing static. So uh, what I want to do is quickly show you inside and show you how this works. And then I'll show you just some of the standard um, experiments that we can do. Unfortunately, some of them I can't do because, for a start, my hair's too short, I'm going bald, and so I can't show the hair going everywhere all over the place, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do first of all is take this off, and I'm just going to show you inside of what actually happens inside here. So what we've got here is a rubber band that goes round, and it rubs with a plastic um, roller up here. So I've got two surfaces rubbing together. So the electrons that are inside this rubber will rub off and they will go into this bit here and then collect around the ball. Now, as you recall, there are two forms of electricity. There is static electricity, that is where electrons are not moving and are still, hence the word static. And then there's current electricity, which is current moving. So we can actually turn one into, an, into the other. So here I've got the Van de Graaff generator. I'm just going to start it up so it starts to go around. It does make a bit of a noise. But what we can do now is we can see where the electrons are gathering and we can move them from place to place. So by putting this on here, what I can do is show a spark. I'm going to quickly turn the light off and as you can see that as I said, I stick. So let's see if that's better. So we'll put this onto here and there we go. That's quite clear, isn't it? So what people think, that, that is not you looking at electrons. Well, it's the electrons as it goes through the air ionizes it, and that's what the glow is, the air ionizing as it goes through. So that is electrons moving from the, the rubber band that goes round, collecting into here, and then I'm moving that into here. It's the desire of all electricity to go to Earth. So it's using me and this as a conduit to go from the ball down to the floor. Now, there's a couple of other things I can show you. Um, so I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'm going to set up the next experiment. Okay, I've set up the Van de Graaff here that's been running whilst I've been setting up. Um, and I know you can't see at the moment, but what I've had to do is stand on a box. So by standing on a box, what this does is it stops electricity going through me into the floor. So I, I create a layer of insulator between me and the floor that stops the electrons from passing through. So what I can now do is I can touch this, and again we see that spark going across, put my hand on, and now me and the ball are both filling up with electrons. Now, one of the most important things about static electricity is how charge works and how charge is affected. So electrons are negatively charged. So that means that I am filling up with negative charge and I'm becoming an overall negatively charged object. Now, what that means I can do is means that similar to a magnet, anything that's the opposite of me will be attracted to me anything that is the same as me will be repelled by me. Now a great object to show this is water. So what I've got here, I don't know whether you can pan around the camera and see the running tap here. Don't come too close to the bandwidth because it's going to get stuck. Okay, so here is the running water. Now when I put this down, now all of us are negatively charged. And when I put round here, I know, is that, is that showing? Yeah? No, that's not showing at all. We see the jet of water. 
Okay, good. Go a bit closer to it. Come on, this way. Right, so see that? Is that clear? Okay, so you can see as I move it here, the water is bent towards it. Now, when you do, when you go up to uh, GCC level, you'll find out more about water and how it's something called bipolar. It means it's got a positive end and a negative end. Now, when I put this around, what water molecules actually do is flip around, and the negative end po points away from me, and the positive end points towards me. So I'm actually attracting those particles towards me, so they bend up and go this way. Now, me being negatively charged can create all kinds of opportunities, um, and we use it in various different ways in industry. So I'm going to show you some examples in a second of how we use electrons for this. Okay, so let's look at some industrial uses for static electricity. Um, the first example I've got on is a photocopier, where they use static electricity by copying an image, and onto a roller they shine light, and the light cancels out the positive charges. So it makes those areas negative. The roller then goes through some toner, and the toner itself is negatively charged, and will stick to the positive parts of the roller. That then goes over the paper and they burn it on. The second type is for spray painting for cars. And this is really quite clever. Um, water droplets, do you remember they were attracted by negatively charged particles? So if your spray paint is water-based or slightly negatively charged, if you create a, a charge on the car's body, and um, this example I've got on here is a positive charge, and I spray the paint, then the paint itself gets attracted to the metal and is less likely to go in other places. So that's really clever. And the third use I can come up with is silly little games. Now, I know some of you have tried with those, oh, sir, could you just press this pen? Um, I, I know the ones of you that try that. Um, here's a little shot game I used to have. I couldn't find it, but you put your finger in and press a button, and then one of you gets a uh, static shock, which is quite fun. And the final thing for today is the last word, which is meaning. Thank you. Goodbye.